In this video, we'll demonstrate how to solve a linear trig equation where the period changes. And the equation we're asked to solve is 2 sine of 3x plus root 3 equals 0 when x is between 0 and 2 pi. I'll write the equation down here and then we're going to work with it. And the first thing to do is to rearrange it. We want to get it to read sine of something equals some number as we've done before. So let's start by moving this plus root 3 to the other side by subtracting root 3 from both sides. We get 2 sine of 3x equals negative root 3. And now we can divide both sides by 2 and we're left with sine of 3x equals negative root 3 over 2. So what I did here was undo the linear operations that is this plus root 3 and this times 2 I move them over with inverse operations to get the question to look more familiar. The other thing we want to do is substitute. This 3x is going to cause us problems if we keep it there. It's easier to substitute. So let's let a represent 3x. And so we have sine of a equals negative root 3 over 2. A more familiar question that we know how to solve. And the way we solve that, I'll go up over here, is by drawing a sketch. We want to solve where a is negative root 3 over 2. It's my sketch. There's my x and y. And we're working with sine here, so that's going to be important. Let's do the cast rule to remind us where things are positive. Here's cosine's positive, all are positive, sine's positive, tan's positive. That means that sine would be negative in this quadrant. And in this quadrant, we'll draw our initial arm, and we'll label this rotation a1, and label this rotation A2. And then we'll solve the related acute angle in there. We should give it a letter. We'll call it B. So inside there, it's hard to see. It's a small diagram. But this little angle between this terminal arm and this initial arm, and the x-axis, I should say. It's not the initial arm we're making an angle with. We're finding the related acute angles. This little B is the angle right inside the terminal arm with the x-axis, the terminal arm with the x-axis. So we're going to solve for related acute angle, sine b equals, and when we're doing these angles to the x-axis, the related acute angle, we just want the positive version. We always use the positive version. You should recognize these numbers too, root 3 over 2, are part of your special triangle. You can draw a quick sketch of your special triangle. It's a right angle triangle where the sides are 1, root 3, and 2, and across from that root 3, we draw the bigger of the angles, pi over 3. And here we have pi over 6 across from the other one. So what has opposite over hypotenuse? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I want the opposite and the hypotenuse to be root 3 over 2. So that has to be this and this, which means it would be opposite angle for that. So b's got to be pi over 3. That's because pi over 3 would give the opposite over hypotenuse of what we want, root 3 over 2. So we solve for the related acute angle, b is pi over 3. Now we go back to our diagram, and based on our quadrant, so this first a1, that's in quadrant 3. So a1 is going to be pi plus pi over 3. It's this whole rotation, 180 degrees, or pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. And then a2, so the second rotation, is all the way around 2 pi, and then back the related acute angle. So it's 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is the same as saying 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. Two answers, but we're not close to done yet. There's more. Because we weren't really trying to solve for a, a was a substitution for 3x. So we have to come back and say, so 3x, really, not a, but 3x equals 4 pi over 3. And now we're going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of this 3 on the 3x. Divide both sides by 3. So divide this by 3, you'll get just x. Divide this side by 3, you'll get 4 pi over 9. We'll call that x1. And then over here, we have also 3x is 
also equal to what a is. So 3x equals 5 pi over 3. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 5 pi over 9. And we'll call that x2. These are our first two answers. We're getting there, but we're not quite done. There's one more thing to take into consideration, and that is with a number in front of the x here, inside the sign, that's going to change the period. We know that the period is just 2 pi, that's a typical sine wave, divided by whatever the k value is. In this case, the k value is 3. So our new period is 2 pi over 3. And just thinking about what that would look like, think of your typical sine wave. It would go up, down, and all the way back to pi. And so if you're asking where is it root 3 over 2, where is it some positive number? This equals approximately 0.866, so almost at 1. If you're asking where that would be, there would only be two spots. But when you change the period, what this means here is now we're going to do a full wave in 2 pi over 3. Or another way to think about it, we're going to compress this wave horizontally by 3. We're going to get three times as many answers. Watch why. Here's 2 pi again, but our period now is as third as big. So we're going to make one wave and come back, and make a second wave and come back, and make a third wave and come back. So where are we getting that 0.866? There'll be one here, one here, that's two, three, four, five, Six, we're going to have six possible answers, two of which we've already found. The remaining two we're going to get by adding on the period. So just for simplicity's sake, because we're going to be adding fractions here, let's make this fraction at a 9 times the top times the bottom by 3. You get 6 pi out of 9. In other words, we're going to have another answer, we'll call that x3, by taking our first impact on the wave and adding the period to find this corresponding third impact. So 4 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 gives 10 pi over 9. That's another possible answer, x3. Same with x4. It's going to come from x2. This second impact on the wave where we're at a height of root 3 over 2, that second one is just going to be extended by a period. We're going to add the period on and we'll get the fourth possible answer. So 4 pi over 9 Oh, and that's not right. We already did the 4 pi over 9. I was meant to add x2, which was 5 pi over 9. So 5 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 is 11 pi over 9. And now we have two more answers. Remember the last part of the wave. We're going to use our previous answers, these two, and add on another period. Just extend the wave by our full period from this equation to get the last two answers. So this was a good answer. It was 10 pi over 9. I'm going to add on another period, which was 6 pi over 9, just adding on the period. We get 16 pi over 9. And our last one, x6, comes from taking x4, which was 11 pi over 9. That corresponded to here. Add on another period. 11 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 equals 17 pi over 9. So let's review what we did here. We moved everything over so that we could have an equation we were used to, a trigonometric equation. We substituted to deal with the fact that there was 3x and we know better how to solve when it's just a single variable. We solve for that single variable using a sketch, finding the related acute angle, and getting our two answers. But then we substituted back in from our substitution, saying that 3x equals one of those answers, and 3x equals the other one of those answers, and actually finding our first two x's that corresponded to the actual solution of the original equation. The last steps we did was to take into account that the period has changed based on the k value, that is the number in front of the x inside the sign, and recalculated the period. Finally, we calculated the remaining solutions that would correspond to solutions for this equation by adding the period onto each x answer. We stopped because we got to 17 pi over 9. You might say, why didn't we keep going? If I were to add 6 pi over 9 to any of our last solutions, I'd go past 18 pi over 9. And remember, the limit was 2 pi, which over 9 is 18 pi over 9. So our limit, if you want to write in brackets here, was 18 pi.